So let's now practice with this equation of the plane we just derived. So first example is going to be the most straightforward, but we've got to start somewhere. We have the directions to write the equation of the plane with the normal vector. Remember, that's the vector that would stick vertically or straight out of the paper at a right angle to all vectors on the paper. And the plane also contains the point 5 and negative 1 and negative 3. The model for our equation, the x component of the normal vector multiplied by x minus x0. Sometimes this is called x0. Plus the b component of the normal vector multiplied by y minus y0 and the z component of the normal vector multiplied by z minus z0. Now it's not an equation. This is just an algebra expression. And remember it equals zero because this was from a dot product calculation representing two orthogonal vectors using the cosine of theta formula. So for our example, We have a given coordinates, x minus 5 and y minus a negative 1, which would be the same as y plus 1, and z minus a negative 3, which would be z plus 3, equal to 0. And the components of the normal vector are 2 and 6 and 7, and these terms are added together when we do a dot product calculation. This algebra is one version of the equation of the plane that we're looking for. Now you could rewrite it. Um, the textbook will often distribute and keep the x, y, and z terms and put the constant terms on the other side. And we could uh, try other side questions. You know, could we find another point? you know, on this particular plane. I think if you were going to try to find another point, you could uh, attack it a whole bunch of ways. You could say, well, what if, you know, x equals 0 and y equals 3. So what if I started with this 0, 3, something? What if I want to find the coordinates? Well, we could just substitute two values into this equation. 2 times 0 minus 5 plus 6 times 3 plus 1 plus 7 times z plus 3 equals 0. And it would not take us long to determine, you know, what is that third coordinate of another point on the plane. I'm actually not going to solve that here in this video. I want to move ahead. But finding coordinates could be a, a simple matter of plugging in two values and finding out what the third part of the coordinate is. So there's a sort of basic uh, starting example. So let's, let's change it to a slightly different one. All right, I'm going to slide this aside. Remember, you have a pause button. Use it if you need it. So. Here are parametric equations of the line, remember? So these were parametric equations. And that means we have uh, the x value starts at four and it goes down by five for every unit of time. The y value starts at one and it increases by three for every unit of time. Starts at negative six, the z value does, and it increases one unit at a time. So let's suppose that this line, this line is normal to the plane. So what's the vector that's given in this line? Well, that vector is 
x decreases by 5, y increases by 3, z increases by 1. To write an equation, we need that vector. And then the rest of the question says its given point. Well, what was the given point for this line? That given point was 4 and 1 and negative 6. So our plane normal vector components uh, I'm going to write the 1 to remind everyone that it's there. So notice I started by sort of making a home for my equation to live in and the x coordinate was 4, so x minus 4, and the y coordinate is 1, so y minus 1, and the z coordinate is negative 6, so z minus a negative 6 is the same as z plus 6, equal to 0. This plane is defined by its normal vector and a starting point. And this line is the actual equation of the vector that comes out of that plane. So this is the plane, we'll call it the piece of paper. This line is that line that comes out of the piece of paper. That's a really critical distinction to be able to make. Remember, you have a pause button. Use it if you have to. I'm gonna move on here to our third example, our last example for this little segment. This is a favorite of mine. So let's suppose I were going to give you three points in the plane. So let me just start with this. If I gave you two points on the plane, I could talk about a line. But it's not enough to talk about a plane, it turns out, because I want you to see this. So this paper has a line on it. But if I were to bring in another plane, it could also go through that same line. And this could also go through that same line. It's not a unique plane. So the third point, so long as they don't all line up together, we call that uh, being collinear. We don't want them collinear. We want the third point to be on a different part of the plane. This triangle is definitely something that makes this paper unique. That is the plane we're talking about. So, let's just suppose this is the point that has coordinates 1, 2, 3, and this is the point 5, 4, 2, and this is the point 2, 0, 4. So, I don't know if I've used this little expression yet in the beginning of the term, but I think of myself sometimes as the king of all partial credit seekers. If I'm going to write the equation of a plane, um, I need a point, and I have three to choose from, and I could use any one of these three sets of coordinates. So I'm gonna come down here, and I'm going to, let's just go a little bit further here, I'm gonna use some, I don't know the normal vector. All right, there's an equation. X minus one, Y minus two, Z minus three, because I'm gonna use this as my given point. But I could have chosen either of the other two points if I wanted. Look, it's like I'm almost halfway done, and I almost haven't done anything yet, because I haven't done anything yet, really. Now, what else do we need? Oh yeah, we need the normal vector, the vector that shoots straight out of the plane. I need the vector that comes out of the plane. Well, it turns out there's another tool we've collected recently. If I were to write this vector here, and I were to write this vector here, and I were to do the cross product of those two vectors, 
the cross product was that calculation that finds a third vector that's orthogonal to the other two. It would find me my normal vector. That would make me happy. All right. So let's find these two vectors. The vector from here to here, one goes to five, so that's an increase of four. Two goes to four, that's an increase of two. Three goes to two, that's a decrease of one. There's your first vector. I'm gonna use this as my second vector, but I could use this one, it truly will not matter. The vector from here to here, one two goes to two, so x increases by one, two goes to zero, y decreases by two, and three goes to four, z increases by one. If I find the cross product of those two vectors, that will find me a vector that is orthogonal to the plane, perpendicular to both of these. So let's see how that works. I, J, K, 4, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 1. I hope that you've done some calculations of cross product before you watch this. Otherwise, this is going to go a little bit too fast. All right, so 2, negative 1, negative 2, 1 times I minus 4, negative 1, 1, 1 times J plus 4, 2, 1, negative 2 times K. Hit the pause button. Make sure you can fill in those little minor vectors. 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 minus the negative 1 is 5. That'll be a negative 5. Negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. There it is. Normal vector. If you were to come to an assignment and you would write in the values 0 and negative 5 and negative 10, it would not matter to me if you left it like this because it, 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 your work clearly leads you to here. Remember, though, that vectors have two aspects, direction and magnitude. So if this vector here... If I were to divide by negative 5, this vector would also be normal to the plane, just shorter and pointing in the opposite direction. So I could use that here. It's an equation. I could divide both sides by negative 5. I'm saying that and not writing that because I don't want to overfill your kind of your long term memory right now. I just want you to hear that there's some other considerations. Leave it like this. Simplify it if you want to. All right, until next time.